Hey guys, in this video, I'm just going to be checking out this uh, Super Knight DC voltage converter. And this one happens to be 138 watt DC to DC. And the input can go all the way from 8 volts to 40 volts. And it should have a 13.8 volt constant output. And it says 10 amps max, and it's on the output side. So I'm assuming you can input a lot more than 10 amps, but I guess you can't go over 138 watts. And it's got a nice solid metal housing with a pretty gnarly heat sink. And supposedly it's uh, waterproof. It's got this like rubber stuff that they pour in over the electronics. And hopefully that keeps any audible noises away. Because nothing's more annoying when you have a device like this and it makes a high pitch whine, um, especially if your ears are still decent. This thing was a little under $30 and they have all kinds of different uh, voltage regulators that do different things. But I got this specifically uh, for something that I'm building. Uh, my battery bank uh, starts out at like 12.5 volts and then it goes down to maybe under 11. Um, but I want it to keep a constant voltage because um, I'm going to be running a computer. But anyways, let's go ahead and check this out. I have a cheap power supply and that's hooked into the input. And it's one thing to, you know, supply power to it and just check the voltage, but it's another thing entirely to actually put a load on it. And I got this cool DC electronic load. So I don't have to go like run around trying to find uh, things that are testing different amperages. I can just um, change the amperage. So right now we're going to set it at three amps. We'll start out at just 14 volts, just about what it's supposed to be outputting. See how it does. Um, 10 amps. I'll go ahead and output that and we can see we got a nice 13.8 you know volts it's kind of oscillating up and down a little bit uh, let's go ahead and turn on the load pulling about three amps on the back end and on the front end we're putting in 3.24 so at the similar voltage we're still losing about four or five watts through this thing and that's going to be um, coming out as heat and that's why it has a nice heat sink but anyways let's go ahead and see what happens when we turn the voltage down at three amps so 13, you can see the amperage starts going up, 12, and still keeping a nice voltage there. We'll go to 10, 9, and then it says 8, so we'll try 8 and still putting out 13.5 volts at 3 amps. But you can see that amperage goes way up. And we're uh, spending about 7 watts for the conversion. But so far, so good. Um, this power supply only goes up to 10 amps. But we could see what happens when we pull a few more amps. It's really shooting up. I'll try 5. And something happened. I don't know if that, I, that might be the power supply um, shutting off, or it could be something in here shutting off. But if we go back down to five, huh. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's something in here shutting off, because if I turn off the power and the load, hold on, turn off the load, then send power to it. Hmm. Hold on, let's turn the voltage up a little bit. See if anything happens. Oh, it came back alive. That's interesting. I wonder if it has like some kind of internal protection, but we're back. But anyways, we still got a nice 13.8 volts coming out of there, but let's go ahead and go to the high end. And you can see it's consuming a little bit of power uh, without any load on it. But let's try 24 volts and yeah. Oh, I guess, yeah, we're at two amps. And you can see the voltage goes down a little bit. That's probably just the voltage drop through the wires, which is pretty normal. You can kind of negate that by using thicker wires. But anyways, let's uh, go up in amperage. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you can see since we're at 24 volts, uh, we're not using as much amperage to do the conversion. You can see it's going down to 12.9. It's Again, it's just that voltage drop through the wires. But so far, it's been working pretty well. And you can see we're spending about 20 whole watts on that conversion. And it's 
not heating up too much yet. It's gonna start heating up if I leave it on there. It gets a little toasty, but I'm still able to like hold my hand on it. But so far this thing's been working pretty well. It seems uh, fairly robust until I go over 10 amps on my power supply, but that might be an issue with the power supply itself. I'm kind of all close to the maximum wattage um, that it states as well. We're about maxed out right here on amperage. Um, let's go ahead and turn the amperage down. To, we'll do three amps because that's two or three amps is probably what I'm going to be using this thing for and then we'll go down to 12 11 10 I'm probably not going to go below 10 volts but anyways guys I'm just going to put it on 11 volts uh, pulling three amps and I'm going to leave it for an hour and then we'll check it with the thermal imager and make sure it's still working all right, so it's been running for well over an hour and you know, we're still at a good 13.5 volts Been sending 11 volts to it pulling about three amps and it's a little toasty, but I can keep my hand on it without burning myself. Here it is on the thermal imager and the hottest point is 100 degrees. Take a look underneath oh, a little hotter. About 112 and we're only at 3 amps so I mean if you're running 10 amps through this thing it might get pretty toasty. But anyways guys thanks for watching I hope this video was useful it'll be interesting to see how long this thing lasts but I will see you guys next time peace out.